Hey folks, I screwed up. I had um, three boxes on video of un worth of unpacking and deleted them prematurely before I actually had the complete video done. So they're gone. Um, so you're just going to have to come to the shop to see what extra I unpacked. <laughs> Anyway, um, they were good, too. Uh, man. And, uh, yeah, and I had a nice intro all, all put together, and, of course, it's gone, too. So, what have I been doing? Um, gone to the dump a couple times, got rid of some trash, picked up a bit of scrap, processed uh, some scrap, of course, and uh, sold some toolboxes. So, um, it's been... Oh, um, what, uh, five days of being open. We're uh, open 12 to 5 now. Just have to spray your hands with uh, hand sanitizer before you come in and after you leave. And uh, do the usual social distancing. And you're okay to come in. So, um, other than that, uh, I guess we'll proceed to the... Uh, new unboxing videos I did I've done so or unboxing on video and uh, you can watch them uh, I've also got some magnet fishing videos that I did some metal detecting videos so check all them out and uh, don't forget about the contest and watch videos till the end to see if there's a uh, little bonus at the end of uh, the items that uh, are going in the prize box um, I've pre-done a lot of videos and we're getting pretty close to the end. There's going to be over 40 items in that box by the time we're done. And at an average of uh, $5 value of each item. And some items worth less, some items worth more. Uh, but uh, you're looking at a value of a couple hundred dollars actually. So you're going to be getting uh, kind of a real treat there real neat uh, if you're into vintage stuff it'll be cool so yeah time for uh, this way or this way I don't know one or the other keep watching and do some unboxing so here we go again with some more unboxings uh, this is just some stuff I've mostly priced but uh, I'm gonna put out a folk art um, mask Photograph of the inside of uh, oh my, it's dirty. Of a uh, kind of a of a store. I'm not sure exactly where it's from, but uh, probably Winnipeg, I suspect. But here it is. Really cool. Love the uh, love photos of insides of businesses. Anyway, and. Uh, Souvenir dish from the public school in McGregor, Manitoba. Button hook from the Brandon, from Brandon, the Zinc Shoe Company. That's what that is. And I believe this is from a time clock, this particular uh, key. And a pair of very old scissors. That are marked um, Baxter. A nice old pair there. That's probably Victorian. So pre-1900. And a brush from Knox Hats for cleaning uh, hats. Right there. Some maps. Some travel maps from uh, Conoco and Gulf. One from Conoco, a couple from Gulf. And Golf Club, uh, Golf Clubhouse in Clear Lake, Manitoba. Souvenir dishes there. And a little bottle of porcelain uh, cement, porcelain repair cement. And a bracelet from Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's got all sorts of scenes from Winnipeg on it. 
I don't know if you can see that terribly well, but uh, hopefully you can see it. And a dish from Bradwardine, Manitoba. It's a forest street town that's dying, unfortunately. I don't know how many residents are left, not many. Uh, half a dozen, perhaps. Maybe less than that. But, uh, yeah. So from Bradwardine. And, oh, I've got one of these cards somewhere else, but from Bolorama. They're kind of a little trick cards. You put them side by side, and one looks longer than the other, but they're identical. Anyway, so that's the first little tray. And uh, we'll continue. Okay, next box. We've got... Well, this would be kind of cool if you're into canning or uh, into granite ware. It's a poster advertising all your canning needs from Marshall Wells. Way back. Let's see that. Pretty cool. Package that up. Owner's manual for some awnings. Okay, we don't really need that. Although it's got a cool uh, Winnebago on the front of it. Hmm. Don't know. Don't know what we'll do with that. We have some diskettes that I don't know what's on them. Hmm. Interesting. I have to check those out, I guess. And it looks like a little German pitcher with a knight on it. And a little Chinese, I don't know whether they call that export porcelain or not, but it's got a chip on it. Kind of nice, but got a little ding on it. And... Quick. And we've got some earbuds. And we've got a whole bunch of tubes. I guess uh, well they put a price on those and just sell them all as one. Yeah. And we've got the old Winnipeg Parliament buildings on there on a the, uh, stove or a uh, fireplace fork. Kind of a cool cool thing. And what else? And we've got an instrument of some kind. I don't know what it's for. I have no idea. Some sort of uh... Oh, forget it. Okay. I don't know. Don't know what it is. Come on by and check it out. Some military straps. Some webbing. For packs, I guess. So I guess I'll throw those in with my military stuff. Some webbing. Still here, don't worry. And an exhibition of Milnery, Boys of Maine, Manitoba. I just I put it in that frame just to protect it. It's kind of a cool piece. If you're into small town advertising. And uh, motorcycle club or organization I should say. And that's modern, it turns out. I bought it thinking it was older, and it's not. It's modern. So it's going to go into a auction box. Let's see what else we got. Uh, some Nixie tubes. Nice, nice art pottery. 
candle holder. I don't know what make that is. Uh, something crafts Newfoundland. Well, I'll have to check that out on Facebook, I guess. See if somebody knows what pottery made that. Small Black USA. I don't know really what that is. That's junk. Snap on wrench. Old snap on. If you're into tools, you know, like snap on products, there's a vintage snap on in mint condition. Three quarter inch wrench. Picture of the, the happy couple or unhappy couple, whichever. And uh, that's from uh, corner of Main, Main and Market Street, Brockville, Canada West. So that's an old one. That's uh, pre Confederation, that's for sure. Long time pre Confederation. And here's a 1954 picture showing Universal Radio. I don't know if that's Brandon or where that was. Could be Brandon. All right. Uh, ticket agent stub. Nothing. And uh, paperweight. So if you're really desperate for a smoke, you just smash that open in acrylic. Kind of a cool paperweight. And this is a daisy mug. I don't know if anybody collects daisy stuff. Open your heart and friendship will follow you. Aww. Anyway, here we go. Dish from some hotel somewhere it needs a good cleaning. And Dominion White Label Ale opener. I don't know, probably a $15 opener, something like that. Bottle stopper. I don't know if you've seen these. These are kind of ingenious. Put them in the um, put them in the bottle and then. Uh, Stretch, stretch them out when you put them in the bottle and when you release it, it seals the bottle up. Kind of funky. There's a... should check eBay. They, there's weird... Uh, weird things like that get collected by people. And some... oh, a military tie. That's what that actually is. It's just rolled up. Pruning shears, some nasty looking prune, pruning shears from Premier. So those are kind of cool. And the camera lens, actually a sc fairly scarce lens. I got two and a half on that, 250 on that. Probably an eBay item. trunk key to a trunk I sold quite some time ago and uh, they never did come back for the key so I guess that's going up for sale a pair of sewing scissors nice little pair really really pair of scissors and I think that's a roller skate a roller skate key is what that is I think, I think, I think. Amway pen. I don't know if you're into Amway stuff, anybody? Another photograph. This one I kind of wonder about. I'm just going to keep it aside. I'm just, it looks like uh, anybody thinking it's uh, Jesse James or somebody like that? The uh, photographer was uh, H. Ford, J. H. Ford, and I'm wondering, seeing as he knew the family, I'm wondering if uh, he maybe was, I don't know, looks like him. Is it Jesse James? 
I don't know. If it is, it's a valuable photograph. I'm going to stick in... If it's not, then it's just Joe Blow and uh, worth a couple bucks. But uh, the way it is, if it is, Jesse, could be a really good photograph. Could be my retirement. Who knows? So we'll figure that out. And that's it. Oh, a wrench. A wrench that probably should just go in the junk. Okay, next box coming up. And the next box. This one is lamps mainly. There's a shade. But, uh, um, let's see. It literally has a candle in it there that would push up. But, uh, it's all gummed up with wax at the moment. Another lamp. Um, don't know who the maker of that one is offhand. I know the maker of this one is Medalta. Right there, you know your Medalta lamps and such. It's a good lamp there, 1940s, 1940. And got the little lady here. Um, she's probably a good lamp too. I just don't know exactly what company she is. I've only got 28 bucks on her anyway. Oh, she's a Johnson Laguerre quality product. That's what she is. So that's that box. That was a quick one. So away we go with another box. And we've got a Winchester toolkit. Not terribly old. Missing a knife, unfortunately. But uh, it is what it is. Somebody will like that. Can't seem to get closed. What's going on here? Apparently the lid's warped. Shall we close it? Apparently not. Okay. And flash tube for something. And the Hughes Owens company slide rule. That's what that is. These used to be really good on eBay at one time. Not sure if they're so much now, but it's junk. And that's Blue Mountain Potteries. I forget what that uh, particular glaze is called, but that's what it is, is Blue Mountain. Normally I don't pick up a lot of Blue Mountain except for some of the pieces that are worth a little more than, than average. But uh, trying to get out of pottery and porcelain and glass and that sort of stuff because it's just... I hate packing, wrapping it. There's a uh, little uh, Japanese novelty. It's supposed to be a little uh, Aboriginal person there. Vintage rifle scope. That's a cool one. There you go. Well, it's all still wrapped in the package and everything, so we'll just leave it in there. Still with the silica gel. Okay. And some art pottery. I would have sworn that one was Medalta, but I don't know. I don't think so. And newspaper. Oh, we got a bunch of. Okay, and this one is probably Belgium. 
it's kind of a nice vase actually really nice piece but I think it's Belgium really cool I got a little chip in the base unfortunately but right there well, it actually is quite a nice vase if you're into art pottery you can appreciate that very good quality a lot of the stuff out of Belgium is I don't know what company that is. Dedham? Dedham? Not sure. Don't know. Don't know what company made that. And that's intentional, that glaze. With that crackle. And a little guy here. Made by Stangle. A little tiny miniature. Got it priced at 15 bucks there by the looks of it. And this is probably McCoy or Hull or one of those companies. The cornucopia. Some of these miniatures used to be actually quite expensive on eBay as well, but they've gone down. eBay's changed quite a bit. Anyway, there's another miniature. And then a whole bunch of miniatures. Right there, and a whole whack of them, all kinds, there's a little elephant in there, a couple little elephants actually, themed elephants, they're all different potteries, American mostly, and pretty much all of them, there's a duck, there's a swan, there's a little corgi dog, or a little poodle dog I should say, anyway, come on down to the shop and look at them, rather than me digging them all out. Anyway, so that's it for that box. That was a fast one too. So we're going to do a further unboxing and uh, just a uh, short one and then maybe another one. And we got Lions Club patches. If you need a Lions Club patch, four bucks each, three for ten. And we've got a mug from Brantham and Henderson, which was a paint company. Let's see. Garbage. Garbage. And uh, got a vet syringe right there. And some Victorian candlesticks right there. They're probably of. Uh, Edwardian candlesticks, they're a little different style. Right there. And, oh, there's the rest of the. Um, oh, the. Uh, the wax kit. That's what that is from. The wax sealing kit. And we have a spoon from, let's see, the Ch Chaudière Golf Club, wherever that is. And another Victorian candlestick. You'll see these have uh, a push-up piece in the bottom that uh, pushes the candle up as it burns. Well, you're supposed to push it up, of course. Anyway, and we have a, what they call a trash panda <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, yeah, a little raccoon on a stump there from Kenora, or Kenora, Ontario. And that's it for that box. Here we go. We have a mug collection is what this is. So hopefully you won't get too bored. Good. Country style donuts. That's that one. Langus beef in a mug, and that's made by Highcroft out of Alberta. Got several Highcroft ones. 
not that you run to the mill grab some mugs. They're all collectible mugs. This one's from Medicine Hat, uh, Highcroft as well. Um, from the Baptist Haven of Rest and Sunnyside Nursing Home. So somebody walked away with that one back in the 60s. Oh, guess it's a employee mug just to tell the employee to get back to work after coffee. And, oh, there's more than mugs in here actually. There's some uh, other glassware, some advertising stuff from the Wild West. Anyway, another, uh, there's a Timmy's mug. Tim Hortons. Their old style mug. Remember those? Another Highcroft mug, a coffee break mug. Another one that says, now back to work inside. Another Highcroft one from Chat Radio. On a medicine hat again with Skip on it. So I assume that was one of the DJs or workers. That's a chat break. Fire King style mug, beef, beef in a mug, Langus again, it's uh, made by Glass Bake I think, or Federal, Federal, Federal Glass, kind of they're imitating the uh, Fire King style de-handled coffee mugs. Here's a McLean's Hot Chocolate. Uh, these were made by Highcroft as well, I believe. Though that one's not marked. There we go. Oh, well, we've got an another one from Chat again. Medicine Hat, Highcroft. 22 karat gold on it. Ooh. Anyway, here we go. Uh, got a little crack in that one, unfortunately. Still cool. And got a early country style donuts one. They used to be the or the donut shop in Manitoba, but uh, Tim Hortons slowly kicked them out, kind of. Seems, or did them get away with them. Oh yeah, I do have quite a few cool mugs in here, or uh, other stuff. Anyway, we'll finish the mugs off here. Uh, Stafford's, Stafford's hot chocolate. Got a glass. I used to have a whole collection of these and I left them behind by accident. But uh, they're all hotel glasses and such. Oh well. Anyway, there's one. And a Dairy Queen. That's a good one. Made by Highcroft. Probably should go on eBay that one, but anyway, let's see. Chicken in a Mug by Highcroft. So if you like Highcroft mugs, get down here. Another one from Medicine Hat again, Highcroft. And this is uh, Town of the Paw Golden Jubilee. So it's a Manitoba mug made by the Alberta Company. Okay. 
another Highcroft, another Langus. It's a different, slightly different style, I believe. It's got the logo on it instead. Again by Highcroft. Surprise, surprise, we got another Highcroft. This one belonged to Joe. And it's uh, probably a um, school one, I suppose, or company. Oh, that's Chicken Delight. That's a good one, too. A neat mug. That's probably a prototype. That's what that is. From Highcroft. When I was in Medicine Hat, the owner of, the, of Hat Hardware, which was the hardware store in Medicine Hat, obtained basically the remnants of Highcroft and was selling it out of his store. And I ended up buying... Oh, several boxes of, of Highcroft, uh, including the, uh, oh, what pattern was it? It was a desirable pattern, anyway. And that's nothing special anymore because it's broken, but it was one of the bottles my father and I dug, so that one's going to stay in my possession, even though it's broken. But, yeah, memories attached. Anyway, another mug. Another Langus again by Federal. And let's see. Another chat mug with Joan on it instead of Skip. Chat break. That's another Highcroft one, of course. So that was cool. Then these are neat. These are really cool, in my opinion, anyway. These are all shot glasses, etched shot glasses from uh, various places. This is probably a Mexican one. El Cortez. Oh no, El Patio. Cortesia El Patio. Anyway, that's not probably not terribly old, but some of these are turn of the century or turn of the previous century. There's kind of a cool one. bit of extra dust in there. Canadian Club Whiskey. Cool one. And this is from the old Heidelberg, Miami, Florida. This is a little etched one. BC Old Colonel Whiskey. Another BC old Colonel whiskey, and these ones have uh, the gentlemen and ladies levels on the shot glass. The ladies down here, the gentlemen up here, and the hogs up here. All right. Okay. This is green stripe whiskey. Right there. Walker's Imperial Rye Whiskey, there. I was thinking of selling these on eBay, but I don't think that's going to uh, do anymore. We'll see, I guess. A. Eisler out of Minnesota, there. And this is uh, Gaelic Old Smuggler's Whiskey. Stirling, out of Stirling, Scotland. Right there. Has a bottle in the back, which is cool. Right there. Hopefully you can see this with even with the light reflection. You notice. 
Walker's Canadian Whiskey. This is a different style again. And this is, uh, I think this is Dewar's Whiskey. It's got a bit of fading on it, unfortunately. But... And this one is a liquor company out of St. Paul, Comus Club Whiskey, the W.A. Bergen Liquor Company. These ones out of Minnesota are quite possibly ones that had been involved perhaps in the um, in bootlegging and smuggling during Prohibition. So they could be connected with Al Capone, who knows. Anyway, Hiram Whiskey, Hiram Walker's Whiskey, London Dry gin, sorry, not whiskey. Gin. And freedom and whiskey gang together. Going together. There we go. And self and bing self and binswanger. St. Joseph, Minnesota. Right there. And this one is from the Queen's Park Hotel in Trinidad. So quite early. And last but not least, we have just the wee Adyok Endor. Dorf. Dorf. Anyway read it there you go so oh and I guess I still have one piece left to show you right here a box from Lowney's wrapped chocolates yay now I got a craving for chocolate what am I gonna do I'm gonna have to go get some chocolate now Okay, that's a wrap, guys, and uh, happy picking, safe picking. Take care. Still here. Good, good, good. You're keeping up on the contest. Good to know. And uh, this time, we're putting in milk caps. Three of them. I've got tubes of these, so or used to, well, I used to have tubes of these. I don't think I've got any left. Uh, I've just got a little stack of them left. It's a kind of a neat cream one. Whoop! There we go. Cream, and we've got one from Modern Dairies. And these went in the top of the milk bottles, of course, as you likely know. If you don't, you know now. There we go. And there's this one. It's a little dairy from, I don't know, I forget what town that one's from. You can probably find out. Or I'll find out eventually. Anyway, so they go in the bin, and that's uh, number 22 of the number of batches that are in there. And it's only half full. I would say perfectly half full, so we've probably got another another bunch to go anyway at least another 10 maybe 20 so even at five bucks a little lot you're looking at a probably something worth a couple hundred bucks so it's it's really adding up anyway safe picking happy picking take care